Mm-hmm. What's up? It's Lip Service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Jasmine Brand. I'm Kim Osorio. I'm Lisa Ann. I'm Kaya. Okay, I like that. That was smooth. Well, welcome back, Lisa Ann. (laughs) Thank you for having me back. It's been a minute. I know, but you're a fan favorite, and you're one of our favorites, too. Thank you. And Kaya, we're popping your cherry today. Yay! Sounds good? (laughs) I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So let's get into, um, well, let's start with you, Kaya. And um, of course, Kim Osario is here, guest hosting. Jasmine Brand is here. I, I I like to call them, and you too, Lisa Ann, the three of you guys are like, Media moguls, <laughs> okay. I would say, just from the experiences that you guys have all had in the business. Me and Kim have known each other for damn near 30 years, I want to say. Yeah, that's scary. And yeah. you're only 35, yeah. so. Yeah, I'm only Since I was five. 27. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Special. No, but we've known each other forever and came up in this business together. Um, former editor-in-chief of The Source, I always like to say that, but TV producer now. So you've seen a lot of her shows um, on WeTV, on BET, on VH1. What other networks? I forgot. Okay. Uh, MTV. <laughs> MTV. BT okay. Plus. BT Plus. <laughs> we love to see it. Uh-huh. And Jasmine, of course, owns the Jasmine brand. Mm-hmm. And Lisa Ann, you have your podcast now, too, on Sirius XM. So comedy show is on Sirius XM, Better Haves. Uh, mm-hmm. My podcast is still self-produced. Mm-hmm. And I recently partnered with a winery in Sicily to bring wine from Sicily to She US. don't play. I know that's right. Nice. Okay. Next time, let's okay. push. A little, yeah, you need to leave a little earlier and you need to... We should have ordered, yes. we should have ordered the wine in advance. We could have, yeah. yeah we but could you know have. what? We'll order it for the next episode, even if you're not here. We'll oh, talk let's about ship it. Ship it down to you guys once we get more in. We sold okay. out of the first. Oh, that's right. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm. And Kaya, this is your first time, so let's get into everything that you have going on. Because my boy Amir hit me up, and he was like, "Y'all need to get Kaya." And before you came up here, now there was a group of guys up here, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh my God, you have a legend coming up and a future legend." Yeah. <laughs> Kaya, it's okay. Listen, you know I've um, been doing OnlyFans for okay. probably four years now, going mm-hmm. on five, and I've been a top creator damn near since I began. And um, I've just kind of like you know um, conquered the platform I in a way, right. you know, mm-hmm. right. And I'm just trying to figure out what's what's next, what's more, whether what, what else is there, you know? Listen, like, OnlyFans is addictive. Jaya De Mateo, is. I saw her talking about how she was about to lose her house, and she went on OnlyFans and paid her whole entire house immediately, off. Immediately. 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 You know how amazing that is? Yeah. It's incredible, especially yeah. for mm-hmm. somebody that we've all loved for so many years mm-hmm. and watched her in The Sopranos. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy to get more work in Hollywood. She's had some smaller projects, mm-hmm. but... It's fantastic to see someone mm-hmm. be able to step in and utilize the platform like that. So many people have, I feel like. So for you to do what you do, don't ever be like, this is, you know, <laughs> right. no, honestly, because even branding yourself to be one of the top creators, that's not an easy thing to do because there all. are a lot of people on there. Yeah, but, you know, I want to move on to okay. to just other things. And it wasn't like, oh, I want to be this porn star type of thing, mm-hmm. you know? So how it did it happen? Like, um, I was literally, I had $25 to my name, mm-hmm. $25 to my name. And I had a son, a newborn baby, and he required special formula, mm-hmm. soy formula. You know, he mm-hmm. was, it was just, it was a lot. And his father wasn't really involved. Okay. And so I had to, I had to make a way, I had to find a way. Mm-hmm. And it just worked out for the best. It worked When out. did you realize that was an option for you? I started at 15. When I was 15 years old, um, you guys remember Vine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You guys remember okay. Vine? Yep. I okay. used to love Vine, by yeah. the way. Literally, yeah. right? I, I hate mm-hmm. that it right. went away and all my videos are gone because I had some amazing Vines. <laughs> right. It was a thing. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, yeah. That's and why so, I didn't, after that, I didn't trust none of these platforms. You thought it was going to go away. Yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. And you're like, they're trying to steal it Vine. But you also yeah. back up all your content now. After you lose everything on a platform, you're like, I'm not doing that right on that. I will back it up to my phone and make sure I have it in case this goes away. You know what I mean? I'm tired of learning these new platforms. Okay, so go ahead. So back to 15 on, mm-hmm. on Vine. So I was 15 and I had these millions of followers and I'm like, huh? Like, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just twerking in a pool. 
I'm at like 15. Twer- I was twerking. That sounds like perverts, by the oh, way. Yeah, if, for sure. If they're following you at 15. They were. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know. Mm. Oh, we know. Oh, we, yeah. we yeah. can. We know. Yeah. At 15. Yeah. That yeah. is. <laughs> honestly, that's scary to me. Mm-hmm. Every but league. If NBL. The, if NBL, the average NBA, kid is now accessing everything. adult content between 10 and 11. And though the one great thing about OnlyFans is actually that it is harder for a minor to log in. Because they got to have a credit card. They do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if if young kids are accessing it that young, then yeah, 15 is almost older yeah. to be twerking in a pool on Vine. Yeah, okay. this was 10 years ago. Right. 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. I started on Vine and I had all these different people messaging me and trying to figure out who I was and trying to meet me and all these other, you know, different types of things. And I was just like, I'm not of age. Right. I let them know. You know, right. from the gate, I wasn't of age, mm. but um, once Instagram came out, you know, they had the 15 second videos mm-hmm. when they first dropped yeah. and everything. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Listen, once Instagram dropped, you know, I posted a longer Vine, you know, mm-hmm. and I blew up on Instagram. How old were you at that time? Probably 16, 17. Okay. What, I think was I was the, 16. what was the video that popped on Instagram? I had these American flag leggings on. Okay. You guys remember when all these different leggings were out? Remember, where they yeah, had used different to be logos and jam. stuff. And you, was, they look, I still have some. <laughs> I, I do too. <laughs> Today, you look at it and you're like, oh, that looks so cheap. <laughs> and you're like, why did I wear that? But back in the day, that was the shit. I have and so I, many leggings. Yeah. I need to th- I'm moving. I need to throw these away. You know I, 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 I don't need them. Because I feel like I can work out in them. I'm sorry, but go okay. ahead. Or they'll come back in style. <laughs> but yeah, I had these American leg- leggings on. And, you know, I just, I was, I did a little quick little, you know, shimmy shimmy. I think it was, uh, at the time I was moving from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And I was cool with speaker knockers, if you guys don't know who that is. Uh-uh. Um, he's kind of a big artist. Like, even to this day, they still play, like, his songs, some, you know, sometimes here and there. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's gone. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he died. Okay. But um, I, I twerked to his song, and it went up. And I have all these people in my DMs and everything. And I was just getting all this different exposure at such a young age. Mm-hmm. And did your parents know you were doing this? My mom found out that I, was I say, worked in the pool right. at 15 years old. We were living in like this kind of like a mansion when I was like 15. Like, mm-hmm. and we had like this nice ass pool, a nice hot tub. I decided to get in there. My cousin decided, you know, to, re- to record me when I was doing a little a twerk and she posted it. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Like, people are really, like, feeding into this, you mm-hmm. know? And I decided to capitalize, capitalize off of it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So after a while, it just became kind of normal. But I wasn't making money off of it. Okay. I was Yet. just I was just posting just to be seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus you were only 15. You probably weren't mm-hmm. even thinking about know. that. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and also... You were underage. How do you monetize uh, right. from when you're 15? You yeah. know exactly. I didn't have management. I didn't have an assistant. I didn't have any of these things. It so also would have been like, kind of illegal to monetize. Yeah. A, a, it might have been. I don't no, know because it also just seems so wrong. Like what? Who are these people looking at a 15 year old? Isn't is like, that considered child pornography? Like, well, uh, it's not. It's not because I wasn't naked. Right, but, but I had a bathing suit on. But I was doing. It's a little performing gross sexual and weird. activity, sure, in yeah. a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. You were pointing that out there in, in a way that was not eighteen right. and under, mm-hmm. right. right? Right. So it was just all these different people from different parts of the world, and they've successful people, mm-hmm. like guys, who known are people, literally famous people. Who I'm like, why would they be messaging me? You know, like, and mm-hmm. but I'm. Throwing ass on the internet at 15 years old. <laughs> That's like, crazy. Lisa, Lisa Ann, what do you think about that? That's- 
It's not that abnormal now. You know, we see a ton of girls the second they turn 18, mm -hmm. uh, they're logging in. You know, they're bad setting up baby, their account. For an yeah, example. Bad yeah, baby, bad baby. As soon as she turned 18, she went, yeah, right for an she example. bought a house. So mm -hmm. if you've already been in Had that space. Baby. <laughs> and look, mentally now, you know, I just did a speaking engagement at Temple and I spoke in front of a, a bunch of students who are in this porn literacy class, mm -hmm. gender ideology. And what I learned was I didn't grow up with the internet. Mm -hmm. So when I was 10 and 11, mm -hmm. you either got a basketball or a football. You were either going to play catch with your neighbors or you're going to go play basketball with your brother. These were like, this is what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the mind shifts so much when at 10 and 11, you're seeing adult content, you're seeing Instagram. You're, mm -hmm. They just leapfrogged over that growing up stage. Yeah. Like, right. you know, and it almost made me sad because I'm like, oh my gosh, the stuff that we did that didn't matter. You mm -hmm. could just take walks with your friends when you were young teenagers because your parents would let you do that. Yeah. Right. And maybe you'd sneak cigarettes. Rats. Like that was as I did crazy that. as we got, right. but, yeah. but when, and you'd spritz your hair with cheap perfume right. and try and so you. But like, so it's it's not that abnormal. It's actually very common for someone, especially as beautiful as she is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure when you were 15, Thank you didn't you. look like a 15 year old. Mm -hmm. 15 year olds no, don't look like didn't. 15 year olds like they did when I was a kid. We didn't wear right. makeup yet. Mm -hmm. I had fucked up teeth. I had fucking mouth guard braces. <laughs> all this fucking hideous. But in now, and also they're dressing more prov provocative, mm -hmm. younger. Like it's a whole different world. There's Art. hormones in the food. Yep, they're yeah. getting boobs I at mean, like we, nine. I still I'm went like, to school where what? they measured your shorts, and if they were above four inches, <laughs> right, they right. sent you home. Your parents yeah. had to come pick you up. Yeah, yeah, and even the stuff that you get to see on television. Oh my I remember god! Yeah. Before back in the day, like. You couldn't just see, you had to have Skinamax or you, you know, they used to call Skinamax. Cinemax. Yeah. I remember Skinamax. Yeah, I remember doing remember those Skinamax Cinemax. movies. We <laughs> loved doing those. Soft porn. Yes, they were all yes. written so poorly. Right. But oh, they, yeah. they were so cheesy, but they were so fun because you, you got good money for them. They had craft services. We'd hang out on set. It was, it was very it was like soft. It was very soft, soft core yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, was, they were such freaks about what we were. They would hire adult stars a, a lot of times to do them, but they wouldn't let you walk in front of them nude because they were sag. So you had to like, have like this patch taped on to your <laughs> hair and cover your vajayjay. Like, all that, and we were all like, "What's so weird? You all right. wrapped up." In the, and then the blankets would up you, know, or maybe a bathing suit bottom. Like it was, and you're still grinding with this guy. It was almost weirder, but they were. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's. Skin and Max was for women, right? Like it was like, all, I feel story. like it was yeah, for like women. Yeah, like a cheesy plot. And, yeah. and you could yeah. like get into it, whereas like porn was for the men. That's how I felt, mm -hmm. right? Like back then. Sure. And the, the, the access to porn, I feel like when I came up, it was hard. You couldn't just yeah. watch. You no. had to get an actual tape. You have to tape. get the big VHS, VHS yeah. tape. Yeah. It was like a thing that you would do and at a, a big slumber tape to party to hide in the house with your too. friends. Those yep. Tapes but are now I it's every porn day. discovered at seven. How? The internet? Me the and internet. my cousin were playing hide and seek. And you found some porn tapes? Under the bed. See? I decided to hide under the bed. And there was a <laughs> there was a whole bunch of just different little tapes. And me and my cousin were like, Oh my God! There's <laughs> boobs. There's there's a vagina. So like, they had the actual real covers on there. Yes. Sometimes parents would take those covers out and put and just you know. No, okay. my uncle was actually like probably 16, 17, living mm -hmm. in my grandma's grandmother's house, and so like we were playing hiding hide, hide and seek. I decided to hide under the bed. I found it. I was like, Oh my God, cousin! Like, do you see this? <laughs> like, let's watch this, you know? And so we decided to put it in the DVD player. We watched it. My whole life changed. Mm. I was corrupted. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow! You think porn, so? You think porn corrupted like watching that at such it, an early age? It definitely does. Mm. It okay. definitely does. Like it exposes you to things that you've never. It seen, triggers a part of the brain that has like, not been opened yet. It mm -hmm. really is a real Pandora's mm -hmm. box theory. Mm -hmm. where once these images are shown, then there's this curiosity that's now peaked, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's looking at other things very differently, where if you didn't see that for another 10 years, right. like when I was growing up, you wouldn't even have those thoughts. Right. You right. know what I mean? When's the first time you seen porn, Kim? I feel like it, I was a teenager, 13, 14, and it was like a slumber party. And someone was like, we're going to watch a porn tonight. Right. Right. Like deal. it was a thing. I kind of wish like my you youth was it. preserved in right. a way, you know, because yeah. that's like, mm -hmm. I wish I would have seen it the first time I when I was a teenager. My first you know? till I was 18. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing we did get a sneak a peek of was in my dad's cedar closet. He had some magazines. <laughs> oh, but back in the day, used to the <laughs> magazines, they didn't spread legs. The women right. have big bushes. This yeah, they the did. the 70s, late 60s, yeah. early 70s. And so it was like, you'd look at them and you'd be so worried about stacking them up in the exact order that you found them in. <laughs> like, like they would know. It was more yeah. fun 
just touching them and then putting them back and not like getting caught than anything. Yeah. But it wasn't until I started working at a club mm -hmm. and they had porn stars coming in every week and I would get a, a VHS mm -hmm. from each girl and then I'd go home and I'd just watch yeah, it like I was better. watching tape. Right. You know, like, because I knew that this is where I was going to take my life. So I would just study it for two years. So you I just knew go, that? like, I <clears throat> So I knew because I started dancing and when I started dancing, I realized the real money mm -hmm. and the real opportunity was to brand yourself and to go out on the road feature dancing mm. i also learned very early that it's hard to be a local house girl a girl that works at the same club every week mm. because you almost have to build these relationships with people and i was never good at that i was never good at the lying you know i'm building this fake like i really right. like you i don't yeah. that's like lie it was very time. manipulative mm -hmm. yeah. right? mm -hmm. and I, I wouldn't buy with it but the features they were just popular and they get to bounce into a club for a week or a weekend mm -hmm. and lead. Stack and, it up. Yeah, yeah. and they and they and come and go on. and they're a limited time offer so and they're getting their tour. flights paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. I could see the world and they were doing cool shit. So I took two years and I interviewed every feature at Al's that would talk to me. Some of them would not talk to me. <laughs> Some of them just don't. And I learned once I went on the road how annoying that could be every week. <laughs> but I had a notebook and I had all these really important questions of things that I didn't and didn't want to do from watching these movies mm -hmm. and not being as sexually experienced as you would think one would be. I was a curious teenager and had sex in high school, but I wasn't mm -hmm. like, they were. Right, right. And I clearly saw things in those movies that I knew I was not ready for. Right. <laughs> oh, shit. Right. <laughs> no, but and both of you are beautiful women to be in the space like doing, you know, what, like you said, but you're trying to move out of this space. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So what do you think is what, where do you see yourself going? I want to be in movies. Lisa Ann like is the perfect person for you to be on here with today because I feel like Lisa Ann has done such an amazing job of you know doing what you did but then Turning people know that around. but people know that but also just being really intelligent and being able to move into the space of like sports broadcasting and having your own podcast and producing i think that you can still you know be proud of who you are and what you've done mm -hmm. but then also still do more you know i feel like if you can successfully do a gangbang you can do anything in this world. <laughs> if they put on resumes, successful at multiple gangbangs. Yeah, did you terrible. did you, you have to yeah, mentally prepare yourself for that? I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed so it. There I got was to no, explore there was my no. sexual on. What, life what, on um, set. What did mm -hmm. you enjoy? What, like, what parts did you enjoy? <laughs> no, I, mean, I enjoyed the fact that I could live out a fantasy on set mm -hmm. in a safe place yeah. that I was too afraid to do at home. Right. So okay. to this day, I'm afraid to bring a rando guy into my space. What if he gets creepy and, and yeah. shows up unannounced? <laughs> like, what if he gets over, weird? Yeah. Like, and what if I don't like him and I got to get him out of my apartment? Like all mm -hmm. these thoughts, I got to like do things. And also I got to do it with men mm -hmm. that if something awkward happened, it, they weren't going to go tell their right. friends. This is their business. Something right. weird happens to a girl it's at work. set. This is work. Work. Yeah. And they're work. like, oh, we've seen it all. And they're really yeah. attentive. Oh, um, yeah. So it was a great, like I grew, I went into that business broken as fuck Ugh. and came out whole. Mm. You felt empowered. I love that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt empowered. I took control of my financial future, which right. was a big goal of mine. Traveled to all these different countries. I learned about human nature. I understand why people watch porn on all levels. And I understand that there's nothing abnormal about it as long as you're not watching like five, six hours a day. I do say uh, that. Yeah, it's, it's a huge much. industry. There's, like, there's no way that much. anybody can act like there's, you know, it is a huge, yeah. like, and it's never going anywhere. Never. And mm -hmm. during the pandemic, it was one of the things that really thrived. And, and that's oh, my only Angel, do you watch porn? God. Yeah, but not a lot. Yeah. Like, do you if, the I money don't. I made I like during the pandemic. But well, the only <laughs> reason is probably because I'm so busy. Like, yeah. I think I'll it's be something tired that, by the time yeah. I get in a bed. It's a great, it's a great yeah. couple thing. It's a great thing, yeah. like, yeah. once in a while yeah. with your guy, like, yeah. just to spice it, it up fine. a little bit. And, and, like, I like yeah. to rent yeah. to hotel doing. rooms and overpay for it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I Wait, it. I want to go back to this game bang. Now, guys, okay. Guys always act like when they say that they did one, they always act like, but I was first. Okay, is there like because they, they they do that right? They'll act yeah. like oh they did it, but I you know I went first, so it's fine. But we're all tested, I so I don't think first. That's, like, but they that's... do act like that, like they act like it's a thing, like the order yeah. of no the one order, wants to go last. The order yeah. does not matter, <laughs> and it should rotate around if you want to shoot it properly. Mm -hmm. Should it be like the smaller guys go first? 
hilarious. Oh, no, I didn't think about that. That's no, because you're question. not, uh, unless you're doing <laughs> anal and you want question. to open it's up. But question. no, because um, what if question. you go from like big to like small and now there's... first of all, you don't put big and small in the same gangbang. Okay, oh, Ooh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> you don't want small to have to see big. Yeah. Oh my God, what good is he gonna do? He's gonna <laughs> see big and be like, what the fuck am I doing here? And I'm gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing here? Oh no, you God. kind of go up the same. Um, I've <laughs> only had one. Like I've had a threesome. Okay, two girls on camera. Two guys. Two guys. Okay. Okay. okay, that's the only time I've ever had more than one guy. Okay, right? And and the smaller guy went first. Nice. See? But I like that. You have I like to. that. I would like that. It's okay. like when you have a butt plug, you put the small one in, then you got to right. like you got to yeah. build it up. This okay. might be like but the smaller guy went first and yes. it was like honestly, I didn't want the threesome. Aww. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. Aww. But I was talking to the guy and he wanted it. Mm -hmm. He wanted. You never let a guy fucking talk to something like that. He got yeah. pleasure from seeing me get fucked. A cuckold. You get what I'm Isn't saying? That called cuckold? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He's a cuck in a way. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> and so See, I love the terminology. You got this. You got this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like you know. What did you like? I really was faking a... it till I made it. But that's mm -hmm. not really a threesome. Yeah, that's, not a... that's not a threesome because it was one guy went and then another went. That's not a threesome. Right. But no, 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 no. I was still like sucking dick and oh, like okay. getting okay. it in the back okay. at the okay. same time. Okay. Okay. I just need okay. another so, double penetration. Mm -hmm. There was definitely like two holes filled at one time, maybe. It's great exercise, I'll tell you. It's like I've had to work like, out so much like, harder okay. since retiring. <laughs> I gotta yeah. open my mouth. Yeah, I gotta squeeze my vagina. Right, wait, that's too much. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I gotta <laughs> remind myself to squeeze my vagina <laughs> with one guy. Yeah, kegels. Yeah, sheesh. <laughs> do y'all do that, Kim? Do you squeeze it? You, you do. You think about that? Gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I gotta remind myself yes. though. Let's all do them now. Right. Yes. Okay. 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 10 okay. seconds. Okay. Do 10 and Hold 10. It. Hold it. 10 and 10. One, two, Jasmine three. Jasmine looks like she's really four, focused. Five, I am. Six, seven, Okay, so eight, you had just nine, said oh, yeah. that this is the best. This is, what I, this is the advice I give to everyone that just jumps onto OnlyFans. First of all, I've been on since 2017. I use it as my library for my, my whatever I own, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. content. A lot of content that I bought back from companies mm. that were folding when the internet started popping and they were like, everyone's going to steal our content. We're already rich. We're done. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll buy all my shit back from you. Mm -hmm. So I own a lot of scenes. So I do a library and then I'll... I'll do a, a stream once a month to keep engaged with my fans. A live what show. What do you do on the stream? On the live show? Um, I strip tease. I do a solo masturbation. I talk with oh, them. And then once a week, I do an Ask Me Anything where I'm fully dressed and I get I help them with dating, how to approach a woman, okay. trying to make them get off the internet and, and get out. But okay. what I tell everyone when they're new is if you could give yourself a number that once you reach that number and put that money aside as money you're not going to touch, even if you start a new business, that's not going to fund that business. Mm. You can always continue to utilize your OnlyFans to fund your next business, which a lot of people are doing, mm -hmm. which right. is fascinating because mm -hmm. it's a great way to not put as much pressure on yourself. But you cannot step aside knowing that these images are going to be out there forever without saying... This was my fucking goal. I made it. It's in the bank. It's setting me up forever. Fuck everybody. And you kind of have to do that. That's right. a, that's where I feel like I am right now. Yeah. I feel like I've reached Good. like, okay, like. You've nested. How, it, much, how much have you investing? made? Well over a million. Okay. And you, but have you saved the million? And I haven't saved a million. I would but say I've save a million. Well over a million. And I'm just like. Okay, this doesn't excite me anymore. I'll tell you what, you though. Know? Listen, when you get old, you know what it's excites like, you? It have excites a me money in a way. Bank, okay? Okay? New, <laughs> okay? New guys. <laughs> new guys always excite me. Okay. What like do you mean? a new guy. Uh, like, like dating a new guy. Like a, Not even. Sex with a new guy? Not even dating. Yeah, sex more so sex. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. Do you do I'm sex with like guys a, on your OnlyFans? I'm kind of like a guy in a way. Like mentally. Okay. It's like. The new shit, like fucking. You know how guys are? They'll be like, nothing like new pussy. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Right. New pussy so so pussy. it's okay. like, yeah. okay, I've been getting like the same. There's naive for a minute. <laughs> yeah. You, you can say dick. <laughs> Just naive. <laughs> so I've been getting the same dick for a minute. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like, I want somebody to like literally fuck my heels off. Okay. Like literally. Do you they find got it's harder me? for you dating with an OnlyFans page? Because I mean, I'm out there. Honestly, I, I don't, when people ask me this question, I'm like, right. As and far everybody as, knows who Lisa yeah, Ann is. So it's right. like, yeah. yeah. As far as like intimacy, 
Yes. And I mean for them, because men get insecure. Because mm -hmm. options, no. Of course not. Right. Intimacy, right. yes. You get what I'm saying? Right. Yes. It's like, <sighs> there's so many guys in my DMs like, uh, how much mm -hmm. can I fuck you? Da -da 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 -da. Whatever. It's like, but are you going to give me what I want? Are you going to make me feel like I'm loved in that moment? I don't want you to actually love me. Do uh -huh. you get what I'm saying? I don't need that. I can... Don't worry about that, you know? But when you fuck me, I want it to feel like there's something special. You want some passion. Passion. So you're Ex not feeling the exactly passion. exactly the word. You're not feeling the passion for your breadwinning OnlyFans page I feel right like, now. Oh my you're God. bored at work. You are bored at work. That's all this is. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you're bored at work. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, she's bored at work. I don't know. Like, like, no, she's I'm not bored when, she, when it's, new, when it's something, so a, guy, a new guy doesn't bore her though. though. Yeah, but, literally. But, it's she, like, but she wants something new work wise too. Yes. Okay. That's do you want and to be in a relationship or do you seeing. like being single? I do like being single, but at the same time, it's like, I'm a Gemini. Mm. Uh, me too. Y'all wild. Are you? Yes. Okay. Y'all so wild on that side. Where I'm coming <laughs> from. So so you, you understand oh. exactly where I'm coming from. Yes. You want that family. I feel like there's flames coming women. out of that couch. Yes. <laughs> but you're like, I want that excitement right. on the other. Two you know? different people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. personalities. Exactly. Right. It's like, okay, I do want a man that's going to be soft with me, oh. be a teddy bear, and be that like, Hard are you boiled so, are eggs, you, you peel with, that shell, and it's like they're just soft. Are you soft with him, though? Yes. Okay. I'm definitely soft. Like, I can be soft. Mm -hmm. But with a new man, it's like, I'm about to fuck your world up. Ah, like, you it's know? A power, like, it's a control thing, it feels mm -hmm. like. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. it's like and it's shoes. like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to bring the mood down or anything no, we're like that. No, we're fine. But... Like, I've been, you know, sexually abused mm -hmm. more than I can count in the past, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, I kind of get satisfaction out of being in control. Okay. Do you That's get fair. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I feel like, oh, yeah, like, he's never had a bad bitch or, like... Yeah, I'm about to show him something he's never seen before. Like, it gives me that sense of power. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. just different. It's different. Well, Kaya, like, do you, have you ever been with somebody that you felt, like, safe and secure with? I, yeah, I have been. Mm -hmm. I have been. Um, in the end, I didn't. But in, in the majority of the relationship, I definitely felt, felt safe and secure. So... I opened myself up and gave myself to him in ways that I wouldn't give, you know, to other men, and, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, but, um, is this I've the same guy you had the threesome with? No. Okay. Good follow up, <laughs> fucking great follow up no. question. I like where your I head's at. <laughs> I like, I like where your head's at. The threesome Whoa. right now. <laughs> I was curious. I can't lie. I did love him in a way. Mm -hmm. I can say I have love for him. Okay. Am I in love with him? No. But I did have love for him, which is why I did the the, the, the threesome in the first place. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I never would have had sex with that guy, the other guy that he took, you know. You were into him. Which was his cousin. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Yes. Yes. What, was it really his okay. cousin? We're almost getting into his incest right here. This is crazy. As yeah. far as I know, <laughs> it was his what? cousin. You uh, know? Yeah. Like, That's crazy. I'm a yeah. hydrate. Okay. We've so got a <laughs> 10 years <laughs> old of fucking She needs incest. to take this. <laughs> So as far as I know, like, it was just like, okay, mm -hmm. like, I get satisfaction after, like, you know, at, off of seeing her get hit from the back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I want my cousin to get some. Oh. From his standpoint. From okay. his viewpoint. Well, I'll you call get your saying? auntie right now. So, right. Look, <laughs> so yeah, oh I was like, okay, fuck it. Let's do it. I was drunk. <laughs> I was high. I was like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Did it. And I was like. I didn't even want to fuck you. Like I would have never done that. I yeah. never would have done that. Do you feel like you had to be drunk and high a lot of times when you were performing? We definitely like when I when I do perform when I make content I definitely like take a couple shots or mm -hmm. take the edge see, off. This but is this is the problem. That's different mm -hmm. for me. Like a blunt is like a cigarette. Okay. You know, like mm -hmm. when you get to the, I've been smoking since I was twelve. Mm -hmm. That's thirteen years for me. 
Okay. That shit is not going to hit me the same as when I first. Sure. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I definitely need to smoke. Mm-hmm. But as far as drinking, I don't drink often. And when I do feel like I need to perform extra or to like make an ex- a- a- aesthetic appeal in a way, you know, like I feel like I definitely have to take a couple shots to like loosen up and get in the get in I, the zone. I feel like I don't do porn, but I feel like I enjoy sex better if I have a shot before. But it's different. You get on it. Set. You for, get it. For a smaller mm-hmm. environment like OnlyFans, I could see that because it's more mm-hmm. intimate. You're in your home. Mm-hmm. But like for us on set, we're asked on camera, "Are you under the influence or any drugs or alcohol?" Mm-hmm. Right. They don't like they don't care. No, yeah. no, yeah. With no, the clear no. head. Yeah. And you kind of want to be because you are in someone's home. You do have yeah. a whole crew that's relying on you for their paycheck. Right. And so if you're a smart person, but don't get me wrong, I'd been in the dress, I never drank on set, and I never, I would have a little bit of JMO when I was doing anal and a, a gangbang, no mm-hmm. doubt. But on the road, never drank, because I was in these clubs. But I remember sitting in the makeup room and seeing girls like pull bottles of Bacardi warm out of their bag and just chug it. Dude. And I used to say to them, like, if you have to do this at eight o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday to do this scene, you shouldn't be doing the scene. That would be me. I'd have to be... um. Not present, probably. They would, you know, and they, yeah. But it was scary for us because yeah. when somebody's not you present, in a way. Right. you don't know if the guy's hurting her. Yeah. 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 You don't know if she's tearing inside. Because in, right. in real life, if you're like that and a guy has sex with you, that's a crime. It mm-hmm. is. Yeah. In real life. And you know, a lot of the male performers have a hard time with it. Yeah. I agree with so you in they, a way. So they get uncomfortable because mm-hmm. they're like, I feel like I'm taking advantage of her. She's not yeah. present. Right. I get I that. I personally have anxiety. But for at home content, I can see it. That's like whether I was filming at home or filming on a set, it's like, I need something to calm my nerves. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a blunt, whether it's liquor. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, yeah, that might be, you know, the the status quo, like for everybody else. But for me, it's like, okay, let's do this. Mm. And just calm down, just breathe. I'm about to perform. I'm gonna look good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna suck the fuck out of that dick. But like, like mm-hmm. you're just like <laughs> literally you have a, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you have to mentally prepare yourself. Like some people, they're naturally born like you, like with the me, ability like, to just be like, oh my fuck god, it. like Lexington let's do Steel it. is in front of me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. Yeah, many more years now I'm that's a big day. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's like. <laughs> that's a big one it is a no, big one I think you might have to have a couple shots <laughs> no no problem that with that one that's not all. sliding in <laughs> no problem at all I do not like really big dicks I just can't I don't I don't like it yeah, she, she's I'm sorry. not gonna lie. I agree with you. I, it's just, I, it's not for everyone. It's all Overly, about the curve of your yeah, uterus. Yeah. And some women have a curve that really makes them feel uncomfortable. And there's some women that say they can take a bigger dick in their ass than, mm, wow. than oh, regular wow. sex. Like, oh, wow. Everybody has a different. Men don't know that anything. Our, our uterus curve, <laughs> not only does yeah. it curve left to right, it curves front to back. Yeah. And everybody's has shifted a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. Literally. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you don't know what type of. What type of dick you like yeah. until you've experienced it all? You know, I've had you the know? most orgasms with a, a medium size. Because it hits your G spot <laughs> just yeah. right. Medium and size there's no, and you're best. not uncomfortable. Yeah. Because no. when you're relaxed, because it's not too big, yeah. and mm-hmm. it does hit your G spot, you're going to have a much better orgasm. orgasm. But when you you're like big ones. I don't like, I like, I small, like them all. You like big ones. I, like I, like <laughs> I mean, I'm set. Look, I produce a lot of my own movies. I don't want to shoot a movie with a small cock. It doesn't right. light well. It doesn't look good. It doesn't open up. It doesn't light well. That is so fucked up. I want a girl that has a nice big booty and she's going to have to open up the whole time because that right. little cock is going to get lost in there. <laughs> right, no, oh. that is the value. I don't want a race car driver that drives but slow. But you know what? Do some people have little dick fetishes? Like, I guess they do. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I did not cater to them. <laughs> I feel like a lot so of women sorry. nowadays are starting to become like, I don't like a big dick. Like, I feel like a lot of women are starting to become like that. I don't know I'm about these social groups. like that as well. Because <laughs> one, one of my girlfriends is like, the big dick. she size loves queen? big dick. Yeah, she's a size queen. We call ourselves a size queen. I'm a size queen. I'm a museum dick. Yeah, it's a museum dick. It's great to look at. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally. 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 I'm like looking that at it. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Good name. It's, listen, it, I deal with one now. It's a, it's a lot of, it's more work. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd rather, like, I'd I'm rather, not sucking that. You're yeah, trying to deep throat yeah. it, yeah, and it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot, it is a you're lot. You're throwing up on it. It's a great yeah. time. And he's like, keep now. going. Yeah, I do it now, and I'm like. She said it is, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's a great it's time to work much. your core. No, uh, yeah. It is. Some it's squats. It's it is. More. You know, so you get that rhythm going, you count your head. I just did 50 squats. Kim, what's your preference? Yeah. 
You're uh, quite a nice big. size. Okay. But I agree with with Jasmine. I like if it's too big, it's like it's and then and then what I found that men who are larger mm-hmm. are ass more they of an are. asshole. They are. You know why? Because they're, they're slinging that energy. thing around. And you know what? So they no. With this so thing, big, they can get whatever they want. It and, is. And it's big a dick energy. will go it's, crazy. It's big dick energy. Yeah. And I think <laughs> For a big dick. Big dick energy is like, it comes with like big ego. It does. It you does. know what I'm saying? Disrespect. Of course. So it's like. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. The littler, the smaller guys. They're so sweet. They're so sweet. Oh. They, make, they definitely give the best head. You know yeah, what? They, they have to. They have the, to. They got to make up for yeah, it. Yeah, they have to. Many, you know? many years ago, I was asked a mailbag question and a kid asked like, what do I do? I'm a teenager. What do I do? I have a really small cock. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, you know what you do? You go to college. You become a plastic surgeon <laughs> and you are going to still marry a hot fucking bitch. I of course you will. Yeah. Years later, this kid comes up to me at an exotica <laughs> at my booth and says... I became a plastic surgeon. Wow. Look at you. Wow. Girl. That's See, wife, a girl. Beautiful. That's amazing. So if yes. you do have a small yeah. dick, you must study. Yeah. And you must do <laughs> big things with your life because you can still be right. a big dick with a big wallet. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Small yeah. dicks can do big things. Right. Yes. Literally. There yeah. you go. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> that's hilarious. And a bumper sticker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's hilarious. Lisa Ann, now I want you to talk to Kaya also about the pivot that you've been mm-hmm. able to make. Okay. Because she's trying to figure out what's next, right? Right. And how hard was it for you to go from, you know, I know you took a break for a period of time yep. from the porn industry, but how hard was it for you to actually move into a space where you're very well respected? I was just about to ask that. Mm-hmm. Right on point. It is hard. And you have to be mentally prepared for it. Okay. Because what ends up coming out of it is really the outside noise is very loud. And I can remember the first year of doing sports radio. First of all, you also have to be prepared that you're not going to make fast money. So for me, it was like reach this target, have this much money in the bank. If I don't make shit for my next couple of years, I'm good because I'm going to be building Mm -hmm. myself up. It's like starting a new career, right? It's the social media people. They were so fucking mean Mm -hmm. and relentless. Mm -hmm. Of anytime I'd say something sports related, you were better when you had a dick in your ass. You were better Mm -hmm. when you were doing this. And it was so constant. Mm -hmm. It gave me a thick skin. There were days that were more emotional than others. And there were definitely times where I was like, I ended up hiring somebody and I and to help me with social to help me not look at so comments you didn't want to see as it, much. Right. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pay somebody to do this and just delete these comments yeah. and allow me to still go yeah. on and feel good about myself and engage with the right community because now you're building a new community, which is 5% of your interactions on social. And you got to dig deep to get their five nice comments, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Through all this other. So there's going to be a lot of naysayers and there's going to be days where it just feels awful. People called my radio show and would say horrible things to my producer. They would get through and say, why did Sirius XM hire such a fucking whore? Like it was, and also I had fans that were so angry that I left yeah. that they were almost trying to force me back in. Yeah. And so you just have to know who your friends are in this, in your, in your core, your people mm-hmm. that love you no matter what. And you're going to have to lean on them a lot. And you're going to have to have days where like, if you don't feel like going on social media, then don't. Right. If you're not feeling mentally well that day and you're, because it's very triggering. I've and, learned that. And, and yeah, and it yeah. Can, you've grown up with it. So you're probably thicker right. skin. But whatever you venture into like, oh next, God. be prepared for that. And then when you prepare yourself for that, like, okay, that's not a big deal. And you know what else I think helps you too also is that she's so well versed in what it is that you do. You know, and I think that helps, right? Because people could talk shit as much as they want. But when you know your shit, you've been working hard at it, then it's kind of like, say what you want, but I know what the fuck I'm talking about too. Exactly. You know, What so, is it you're yeah. passionate about? Honestly, music. That's, ah. that's, that's my biggest passion. Like, I, I record. People don't know I record because I don't drop music like that. I have one song. Mm-hmm. One song out on Apple Music, Spotify, all the network, all the you know streaming. What's platforms. your name on there? Kaya. Just Kaya. Okay. Just Kaya. So I've dropped a song, but I haven't actually like let people in. My Why? struggle. My struggle is letting people in because I've seen so much of like how people let people in, and it's just like backfired on them. And I'm like, oh my god, like. They're trying to actually be themselves and people are shitting on them. What's the name of the song? It's called I Gotta Gotta Go. Okay. And I dropped it 
probably two year, two three years ago. Mm-hmm. We'll find this song. And Your OnlyFans mm-hmm. fans would be excited for you, believe it or not. Honestly, I have a lot of music fans. They would be they excited. Ask they me want for music to know what all else. the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I'm just so scared because what I actually put in my music, that's what I'm actually going through. And that's like what I'm, that's what's going on in my life. And it's like, if I let you in, what are you going to say about me? Like, what's going to end up in the blog? Because music what's gonna, is very like, personal. It is very yeah. personal. It is. It's like you're literally speaking from your soul, your heart, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're just putting it all out there. And it's like, people are going to take you for who you are and accept it and relate. Or they're going to be like, what the yeah, fuck? but you, you gotta just, shit. but you gotta just you know? focus on the people who relate. <clears throat> yeah, right. got, like I said, that five percent of your community yeah. that's still giving you love. Right, that those are the people you get extra close with, and your and world goes from being big to small. But you know what? You remember those people, and they introduce you to other friends because mm-hmm. they share your stuff. And now you start to build this like kinder community. That's what I'm learning. You're right. Yeah. You're, <laughs> and it and, and it feels like you're almost afraid to fail. Right, like it feels way. like you're afraid to fail. I feel and like everybody is, right? It is. Yeah, it is like, a very it's hard, hard to put thing. Yourself, but like, when you put yourself out there, that success. is opening that up. It's right? like a different. Okay, I do porn, right? Mm-hmm. I literally spread it open for everybody, right? You have the short haircut and the um and the and the, the, the um, I do. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but okay, so I spread it open for everybody, but it's not. That's not my heart. Mm-hmm. That's me, like literally trying to appeal to you. Okay. In a way, you get what I'm saying. It's like that's not who I am. I do know. You enjoy, I know do you what enjoy? I have. Do you enjoy doing porn? I have, and okay, I do sometimes. No, I do. I was going to say there's a huge difference between just sitting here listening to both of you talk about what you do. Right. Right. And I could feel like your energy feels like you're not all the way in it. You know, I feel like you actually wanted to do what you did. Oh, totally. She did. Literally. She said One million percent. She said it. And that's the difference. Okay. So like. But I also feel like, were you ever at a time like how Kaya's apprehensive now while you were in it? Because I feel like you've also come through on the other side. Of course. And been able to really like be super successful, put that behind you, know that you could do other things, but still do that. Yeah. And you know, I had many bouts with where I was, but the difference was. At 16, I wrote a mission statement to myself. I wanted three things in my life. And you said something downstairs earlier. You were so shocked that I never wanted kids. Yeah. Well, I had a class. The teacher mm-hmm. said, if you could nail down three things that you want. All my girlfriends were like, I want to get married. I want to have kids, mm-hmm. a house, whatever. And mine were, I wanted to travel and see the world. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be financially independent. And I wanted to make my own schedule. And so from 16 to 18, I was spending time thinking, well, what kind of fucking job is going to enable me these (laughs) things, right? right? right. And it was the perfect fit. So anytime I would get down on not loving the moment that I was in and what I was doing, I would think, but this is fueling your dreams. You're getting to travel and see the world. Right. You are becoming financially independent. You know, I had these other things that would just be like, this sucks right now, but this is why you're doing this. They're this echoing sucks. in the back. Yeah, like, and yeah. it's important to have those. Well, Kaya, what would be your mission statement? Honestly, my goal with this, when I first started, it was just to provide. Mm-hmm. You know? You I had no child. means. Yeah. I had yep. no, I, no identification. Mm-hmm. What did I didn't your have fam- an ID, a passport, a wow. nothing. I didn't have anything at that time because me and my baby's father was going through it. Mm-hmm. And he ended up, you know, um, stealing, you know, robbing me of my identity. Wow. And I was born in Germany. So it's a little bit harder. It's an extensive process to get, to get all your of your pop- documents yeah, in. Yeah, sure. Do you get what I'm saying? So I couldn't I couldn't obtain a, le- a legal job. Do right. you get what I'm saying? So I had to figure out a way. Literally mm-hmm. figure out a way. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even I couldn't even work at my local strip club. Right. Because I needed an ID. Right. Mm-hmm. You get but what I'm saying? You needed an ID to log into OnlyFans, right? So you did at that time. I, that's why I was using Patreon. Gotcha. I used Patreon when I first started out. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me my money until I was able to get my ID again. And I like discovered, I'm like, I'm making all this money off Patreon. Like, he really crippled you. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) He definitely did. Right. I I was only 19, I think a great homework assignment is to think about if you could pick three things, what would be the three things that you'd like to see in your life the most? It's it's hard. Like I remember that class mm-hmm. and right. thinking how basic mm-hmm. right. is three things is. Mm-hmm. And you thought about it for days. We had all this time. We were all talking about it. And it was cute hearing what everybody wanted. I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania. 
this was pre-internet and it was very basic you're from pennsylvania wanted. yeah but ev- what that's part what, easton easton uh, easton by allentown you can by philly by philly i'm yeah, yeah, from philly i yeah, yeah. i am outside yeah. of philly so you know <laughs> Okay, so I grew up kind of in Philly, but I also grew up in Brownsville. Oh. In Uniontown. Yeah. Pretty you know that area. little uh, city, yes, right? Yes. Okay, so that's where I was, where they say Yins. Yep. But it's just a yeah. thing. And that <laughs> and that really stuck with me. And so right. this business was it provided me so many things. So yeah. I have to appreciate it. And you know, I never wanted to be one of those people that when I left turned my back completely. I want to go to Exoticas. I want to go mm-hmm. to AVN. I want to be present mm-hmm. for all the performers today for them to see me and be like, she's living a great life. She's good. You know what I mean? Because there's so many people that will never reach the level that you reach to. And you are on the other side. Yeah. yeah. But like, you also yeah. reach a certain level within that industry I too. Because there are so many people hard. that mm-hmm. do that, that do porn, and they'll like... They may never... You, yeah. They barely scratch the surface. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's consistency. Mm-hmm. You exactly. have to be consistent with what you do. Mm-hmm. It's consistent, but it's also listening to your fans. It's like, yeah. what do you... When they... when they react to what it is that you put out. You're like, what do they feed it into more? See, what, we didn't you know? have reaction my first 15 years in the business. Right, right. We just, because you were just shot yeah, movies production and what about our lives? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I didn't work for the summer for three years of my life. When I first moved to California, I had to live at the beach. And I said, I'm doing all my work in the fall. I'm going to live like a teacher. I'm going to take June, July, and August off. <laughs> no, and, and it was right. the, and I had, and I lived on a little bit of money. Who cared? My rent was six hundred a month back Woo! then. I still thought I was rich. That's I was living in California, <laughs> and, and like it was simple. But yeah. you know, it was a vehicle for me, and so I'm grateful for it. And I don't mm-hmm. want to turn my back on it. And I don't. And I don't think it hurt me. It is who I am. And the responses of others. What I've learned is, it's not about you. It's about their relationship with what they're doing. Right. Whether they feel guilty about being on your page because they're in a relationship. Yeah. Where they feel unsatisfied Mm -hmm. about their own sexual lives. Now when people say mean things to me. You know something wrong with them. I usually, I I gave up trolling trolls last year for for New Year's Eve (laughs) and I've stuck with it (laughs) two years out. But before that, I would write back, I'm so sorry that nobody will let you suck their dick. Mm -hmm. Like I would just say, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Sorry you can't get money. (laughs) But but it took me time to understand. Brokey. That yeah. is not about you. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not about you. It's yeah, about them and their all. relationship. Because why would they care so much about to the decisions actually, that you make yeah, in your life? Comment on. Yeah. You know, I told you. It depends on the day. Right. Certain days I'm yeah. trolling you back. Yeah. yeah. Like I and I'm my mouth. Can I tell you like why are you so worried about it's what I do with my pussy? Yeah. Yes. And mean it. Yes. yes. And I agree. But I want to know what are your fans like from you? Like what? Is, what is you said you had to listen to your fans? What kind of things do your fans like? Honestly, apparently I just got posted on the blogs and I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. My hairstylist just told me like yesterday when I went in to go see her, she was like, I saw you on the blogs and da, 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 da. they were talking about the Twitter post that you posted What's because post I had Twitter? finally post, finally posted a BWC video. What's that? White guy. Oh, okay. So I've always, from the very jump, always been with black men, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I finally decided to venture out, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and, you know, I to appeal to a different audience. Yeah. To mm-hmm. gain a different audience. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I decided to, you know, f- post. It's not the first time I've actually been with the white guy. Mm-hmm. But you I've been with black guys okay. plenty of times, but actually posting it and promoting it and trying to, you know, but- they just, Twitter was in an uproar. It they were just upset, like, or they, they, they liked were it. so upset. They were, okay. they were, wow. they were so upset because the, my original fans were because I was always with black men. A black men. man, okay. Exactly. Message mm-hmm. to everyone so, out there. If you're watching porn and you're getting your feelings about it, I would like you to go for a walk, <laughs> touch some grass, maybe make your bed. And I'm sure thing. you have laundry to do. A lot of my followers <laughs> feel like they're actually, like they feel genuinely connected to, connected to me yeah. and they feel mm-hmm. like I'm their Which is what you kind of, girlfriend. you yeah. want it kind of. But I do. Then at time, yeah. Lisa Ann, what was it like the first time you had sex with a black guy? Ooh, oh, I was imagine? a teenager. I was in high, I was in, you know, middle school. I mean, school. in porn, in porn. Um, well, it's interesting. You know, my first two years in the business, I wasn't allowed to do interracial because wow. in the 90s, uh, the cable companies that were buying the contract, if you were a contract girl, your movies were made for cable. Mm-hmm. And the cable companies didn't buy interracial. So the first two years of the business, I was not allowed. And so when I went out on my own, the first thing I did was went company to company. And I said, look, I got to shoot interracial. It's bullshit that I haven't been able to have my own choices out here. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I did 
a movie that was like a B, like apartment, had to pretend it was my first time just to break <laughs> the seal. Right. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to be in these meetings with the cable buyers and talk about how important it was to showcase interracial films on all platforms. Mm -hmm. And so slowly but surely that gets changed. But from that point forward, I made it a mission to at least be 75% interracial of all of my scenes because so many agents and people in the business still lie and tell the white girls, if you do this, it'll ruin your career. Right. You won't get dance wow. bookings. So to me, it was like, I want to show all of you, it will not do anything and you should be doing what you want to do, not what somebody else wants you not to do. Right. What what year would you say that switch was over? Like when I would they say started to it accept started it. like 96, 97. Seven. Okay. And mm -hmm. it took, you know, that's, you know, that's a long time ago, yeah. but it that's shocked crazy to me. It shocked yeah. me to get in the I business. I was born in 98. So yeah. for yeah. her to be like, you it really shocked are me OG. to be told that because I was like, wow, I didn't think I'd be leaving my small town in Pennsylvania. Isn't that crazy that for you to have sex with a, a black man and then for you, now, I wasn't even today, born. Today, you having white. sex with a white man, a white man right. makes people so angry. Literally. It's extreme controversy. You're mm -hmm. like, I'm turning, I turned my comments off. I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm yeah. not doing this. I had to literally turn my comments off. I'm like, you guys are not going to bully me into doing what you want me to do. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to do this. Right. This is what makes me happy. This is who I feel chemistry with. Do you get what I'm saying? And my OnlyFans content is... I want to say 98% of the time is organic. Right. It's horm it's it's homemade. It's it's just very like it's in the moment. Mhm. Mm like, oh, we're about to fuck. Oh, babe, hold on. Hold this. Hold this. Like like right. get oh, this on wow. camera. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like it's in the moment. So for people to tell me, oh, like the shit that they said, you guys. Like what? They would be like, "Oh my god." You you fuck with pink dick now and da da da. da. <laughs> oh I'm my like, god, the pink I, dick. I'm <laughs> curious. I'm I'm so curious on the interracial uh -huh. stuff, and I want to know from a business standpoint, did the interracial content perform differently around that time? And today, what is like it's the still, performance level? It still performs yeah. way better than most <laughs> other content. Wow. See, uh, and even then. Uh, once it started to be something where, remember when in the 90s, we did all these adult bookstore right. signings and I would go to the adult bookstore and they would tell me like, all of this is renting like crazy, but we still keep it all the way in the back. That's and I'm so like, weird. no, you're going to put all the Lisa Ann movies together right. and you're going to put them together. It doesn't matter, but it did. It performed so much better. There's many reasons. I mean, I just think it's so beautiful to shoot. You know, I love nothing more than long, dark fingers on a girl Ooh, caressing a nice white body. You know? Yeah, like the Benetton ad. Like right. that was a thing. Why? Right. Because it's beautiful. The right. contrast is so artistic. It right? really is. And, and, it, and it's just so different, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I like black hands and black dick too, so I understand. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love a black dick. And Jasmine paler Ooh. than you, Lisa. Yes, girl. <laughs> I love the contrast. It's fun, right? Mm -hmm. I've never been with a white guy. Me neither. Really? No, never. I, listen, the, one thing that I this is awful to say. I just can't imagine having a pink dick in my mouth. All right. I can't. I can't imagine it. I've honestly, I can't imagine even it. if it matches your hair. Nope. I can't imagine the pink. It's the pink but dick in my mouth. Look that that sexually, pink. I've only <laughs> been with two white guys in my whole expression. life. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can't imagine. Sexually, I've only been with two white guys in my whole entire life. How is it? The first time I was 17 years old. Okay. He actually mm -hmm. ended up proposing to me. Aww. And I was like, How old were you when he proposed? I was 17. They were both 17. Bless his heart. I was oh 17. God, and I was so like, cute. Oh my God. But in the back of my head, I'm like, Oh no, he must be crazy. <laughs> We've only been talking for like three weeks. He's crazy. Why yeah, is he proposing he to me? He's you know? But that was the first, at 17 years old, that was the first white dick I've ever had in my life. <laughs> And we fucked. We went to like this power plant or something. A power plant. <laughs> yes. And we went to so a random. power plant. Like a power plant. And it was just like we were sitting out there in his car. Mm -hmm. I think he was like in a Toyota or something. Oh a little my Toyota. God, sex in a car. And we had sex in the that? back of this. Like, and he had like maybe seven and a half, eight inches. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> oh my God. So bad for I didn't a white boy. know mm. white guys could do Wait, this. Wait, did you lose your virginity? <laughs> I lost my virginity at a very long, a uh, very young age, and um, 
not a this, good experience. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's not a good experience. It okay. wasn't consensual. Right. Mm. So, but I lost my virginity consensually at at 15 years old. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, when I met him at 17, I was just like, oh my God, like, this is the biggest dick I've ever had. And you're a white guy. Like, <laughs> oh, let me, let me say this. Like, when I first got to California, one of the first things I wanted to do when I had what I considered money was see a therapist because I wanted to reinvent my life, didn't have a great family, just wanted to learn. And I wanted to learn why I was so drawn to this. And for many of us who have been sexually abused when we were younger, when something is taken from you and you don't have the choice to offer it, mm -hmm. you lose value for it. So it does make it easier for us to exist in this space. Whereas my friends that didn't go through something to them, mm -hmm. it would just be crazy to even be naked on stage at a strip club. Mm -hmm. Like if they would tell me, if you can do this, you should do this because we couldn't do this. Right. So it is very common. And I did, I did three years of therapy to really understand myself, to make sure I wasn't making reckless decisions, to plot and plan my life as purposefully as I could in my early 20s. But it really helped me identify with that because I was curious when I got into the industry how many women had similar stories. And I was like, there has to be a reason why this becomes the melting pot. And that's really the reason. Kaya, have you done have therapy? You done, yeah, oh, have you sorry. done therapy? Yeah. I've never done therapy it's so helpful i've been recommended it's so helpful it's girl you need like, to go to therapy it's so I'm helpful kind of like i'm just very apprehensive about it i'm very like standoffish mm. about it it's, it's very just like you'll really get to know I'm yourself like, uh, you know what i don't know because i don't want to go to a therapist that's like textbook I want somebody that's actually you interview had real people. life experience. Yeah. You, interview yeah. you get recommendations. You interview till you find somebody you jive mm -hmm. with. Look at yeah. it like your accountant. I'm pretty particular. And I, don't, with those I think people. it's more so, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> don't don't think of therapy right as just the traditional like you sitting across from a doctor and therapy can come from so many different like places. And that's where I find it. So right. when people ask me, have I been to therapy? I have not been to professional therapy, but I've had, I feel like the right people mm -hmm. in my life to kind of guide me and soothe and heal certain wounds, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like I'll that's tell you, kind I'll of- I'll tell you all the stupid shit I was doing. And one of the first mm -hmm. things my therapist said my first month was, here's your project. You have to meet five guys that you're going to be friends with that you're never going to have sex with. Because mm. at that time, as a teenager, Ooh. I was just flipping through guys, <laughs> right? She's and like, and, and that was a normal, and, and that changed my that. relationship yeah. with, with men. men. Yep. Because you, if you're going to be friends, you actually have to think they're decent people. Yep. Yeah. You get to know them. Mm -hmm. You get to hear them talking about women they're dating and how they want to yep. treat them. And you get a new view. And and it was it was just all, all these little assignments that you honestly- You know what's crazy? I will say this. I've always felt like men who don't have women friends can't be trusted. Because I if you, you only look at- Yes. women as sexual as sex. objects uh, yep. or like I can't just be friends with you that's yeah. an issue yep like I've always had guy friends yeah that I've never had like any attraction to they've never They're tried like to approach they me yeah. Like brother yeah. to you and so I feel like that's a valuable thing and I think that men should be able to do that yeah as well Definitely. yeah do you have five guy friends that not five okay. I have a few Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Probably not bad. Two or three. Not bad. That's mm -hmm. not bad for yeah. your age. Yeah. I have two or three maybe mm -hmm. that, not you bad. know, I've never had sex with that mm -hmm. I can literally call and I've that I've literally cuddled with in bed. Like we've spooned, but it's never gone past that. Mm -hmm. Not a kiss. But they can't want to have sex yeah. with you. Never I have has to be like, like, I can't even think about spooning. it. Like, my like, like, no, it's like, 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 okay, we've been drinking and smoking all night. We went out, had a good night. And it's like, okay, you're a guy. And you're here in my space. No, your if guy friend goes home. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, he, can't. Can't. He, can't. he can't sleep on the couch. He sleeps back. on the couch. And then he goes See, home. to but me, he it's home. like, okay, yeah. if you're here, fucking hold me. Oh. Do something. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. like, I don't want to feel that distance that like, I don't know. It just like does something to me. Like if I feel connected to somebody and I'm not touching them in a way or mm. talking to them deeply. My guy friends tell me deeply. I look cute. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with right, you? Why right. you fuck with me? Like, I, like, <laughs> my guy friends, I would be disgusted at the idea of cuddling. It right. would really? never, yeah. yeah. yeah the me guy too. friends I have, yeah, me too. Are, it would be like cuddling with your brother. Me yeah, too. it's like your yeah. bro. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, exactly. I think that's a different, those five guy friends are different. Like, like you need to Jasmine, find. Jasmine, you could never see me and like I'll cuddling tell you what, with Mano. That Mano. took me time yeah. I would to understand like, what she him, meant by yeah. it. <laughs> see, it I've never helpful. had somebody that like was a friend to me that I didn't feel like I needed. I don't know. Maybe touch is just my thing. 
You know, like touch just might be my thing where I'm like, okay, we need to be touching in a way. I don't care if we're holding hands when we go to sleep. Do you have just a, touch do you have, me? Do you have siblings? Do you have a brother? I do, but I'm not as close with my siblings okay. as I like okay. to be. Okay. You know, okay. why is that? Just because of like the route that I've gone and mm -hmm. I've chose. So your family has issues with this? They don't anymore. Okay. They did in the beginning, but they've kind of evolved with time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's like, okay, like this is who she is. And if you know, this is who she is. I'm either going to love her or I'm not for who she is, right. not what she, what it is that she does. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is, she doesn't ask us for anything. If yeah. anything, she sends us money. Yeah, she helps so, us. So yeah. that helps a lot. Yeah. Exactly. You send your family money. So they be like, like oh, we cool with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Take so this it's money like, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> we're going to accept who she is at her core or we're not. Like, yeah. and what I do for my job is not who I am. And that's like one of the biggest things that I'm like trying to put out there. Like mm -hmm. you yeah. guys, a lot of guys have this, you know, perception that porn stars aren't real people. Oh they my don't god, have the shit they feelings. say to you in the DM. <sighs> I, 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 I explain to them that we don't align, and I refund them money and block them. Mm -hmm. So I don't want members exactly. to my page mm -hmm. that are disrespectful yeah. that exactly. come in and just They're say, like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please don't dirty. Rush me. And I'm like, <laughs> "No, I want this to be exclusive." Yeah. This is my club. You yeah. I have guys yeah. that literally like, I don't meet up with guys. I don't have sex with guys for money, you know, whatever. But they'll DM me and be like, you know, can I book you? Da -da -da -da. I'll take their money. <laughs> I'm like, because I have it in, my, never I have it in my bio. No meets. No, da -da -da -da. you get what I'm saying? Right. You're never going to see me in person. You might see me behind a, a phone screen. I report them to OnlyFans because that goes against the policy of the page. <laughs> no. I don't want to lose the money. I'll though, take so. their the money. Have, <laughs> have, you, ever, have yeah. you ever had a bad I'll experience with, on, see, with meeting somebody in real life that follows you? I, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's a blessing. I don't no, think yeah. that's, that's, that's you've had some bad ones. Oh. But not bad ones, but you know, it's just, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's an assumption. And even when they come to trade shows or whatever, there's an assumption. People know me well enough by now. I'm pretty blunt about it and pretty honest. But even dating can be difficult because a guy made assume. I went on a date with a comedian a couple of, like say five years ago. And we only went on a one date and I was going away and I was going to the mountains with my family and, and I wasn't gonna have service. So I didn't answer the phone for like four days. This fucking guy left me an email, a, a, a thread about how disappointed he was. I couldn't believe I didn't fuck him. Like he must have just thought, and I didn't feel him he's that crazy. way. And that's, I don't, wow. I'm not going to fuck a random Psychopath. guy on a first date, but that, <laughs> right. that let yeah, me know nuts. I did the right thing. Psychopath. But yeah. he had those expectations. <laughs> thank you, family. And they thank do you have mountains. expectations. <laughs> yeah. So you just have to temper those expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, one thing is one thing, one thing is another. Do, do you like women? She does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole other thing. <laughs> I like women in a way. When I've had some liquor in my system, I love I women. Like women. But when I'm sober, in a way. I'm like, you're cute, but okay. She likes women part-time. There you go. Okay. Women on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dibble and dabble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you couldn't see yourself with a woman. I used to. Mm -hmm. I used to. After, you know, growing up when you've had, you know, yep. those sexual yep. experiences mm -hmm. where you're not in control. You begin to look at, you know, okay, what's gonna relate to me the closest? What's gonna comfort me more? What's gonna make you make feel, me safe. feel safe? Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I definitely gravitated towards women when I was younger in my, like my high school days. Mm -hmm. I had a bad experience, and that kind of just turned me so sour. Mm -hmm. Like I, <laughs> I was talking to this girl when I was in high school for like years, and I finally went to go see her. And we ended up having sex and like she wanted to eat my pussy. She wanted to finger me this, that, and the other. But when I tried to go do the same, it was like she was very hesitant. Mm -hmm. And like when I finally did, like, you know, you know, you're you're fucking around and like <laughs> I'm teasing her, like fingers finally go in. Mm -hmm. The smell oh. was just not right. Oh my and god. Being, okay, like you don't fuck any niggas. You don't fuck guys. Right. right. So how did you, you do get not an STD? Guys. So how do you how is the how is your pH off? Mm -hmm. There wasn't a guy in you. So what did you do to cause your pH to be off? It made me begin to question like who she was and 
all these other things, but like it just really put a bad taste. So did in it my turn mouth. out like, literally? Literally, no, yeah. I didn't taste it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but no, definitely it put a bad put taste in my fingers. In my nose. That's yeah. how you know you For really sure. don't like women because a man will have a bad batch. You're like, ah. he still go in. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. You know? Know? but I was yeah. in love Let's with watch her. Watch real quick. <laughs> I was in love with so her. So what was huh. going on with her? I Did didn't you ever find know. out. I never found out, and mm. she actually messaged me like a few months ago. It's crazy. <laughs> she's she actually, like, I got that fixed. <laughs> like, no, Aww. she didn't. No, she just. Oh, she's like, I didn't. It was like nothing ever baby. happened. Like, she just messaged me, and it was just like. So, oh. you, so you never talked to her about it. Never. Oh. I've never brought it up to her, but I've definitely talked about it on social media. You know, <laughs> she knows it. I don't think mm. she's caught it. She might catch it now. Oh, she right. caught it. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. God bless her. But um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. It just wasn't right. And I was Do you like, do girls on your OnlyFans page? No. I've never had a girl on girl. Oh, you um, can make big money doing that yeah, right now. Listen, you that I have shit. one girl Get that, that I've been going. planning to do with. So a collab? I'm, I'm definitely yeah, I'm definitely collabing with oh, one girl. Mm -hmm. um, what made her so girl. special that you that you decided to do it? She's older mm -hmm. from one. And then two, like I just it's energy for me. Like I just I, I feel like she's the way she speaks and she presents herself on social media is just like, okay, like she takes her health seriously. She's clean. I see she's clean. You get what I'm saying? Are you guys getting tested and even though you're just kind of self-regulating? Good. Of course. All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Every time I have sex, I go and get tested. Good. Whether right. I feel like I've been fucking with you for this long or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay... If I'm in a relationship and I have a boyfriend, I'm like, okay, I might get tested like every, you know, two or three weeks because I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know? And that's, he's getting and that's my boyfriend. And he's getting tested too. And that's my boyfriend. Okay. I, I don't know if he's getting tested or not. Because that's but important. I make sure you I need to make sure you see his test also. Yep. Yep. I, I make sure, in the beginning, I definitely yeah. do make sure I see the test. But like, if we're in a relationship, I make sure I'm okay. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like... Oh, you need to go get tested every single month. Like, I just feel like that's just too heavy on the relationship. It's like, I'm going to make sure I'm okay, but. Do you, you know, like guys in the same industry as you? Like, would you want to? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> I've tried dating one guy that mm -hmm. I've been in the industry with that we had great chem chemistry. Everybody always talks about us. They always talk about, are you going to do another video with him? Did it? No, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm okay. not. There's reasons, but um, he just wasn't my type. He wasn't mm -hmm. my type. My, wasn't my cup of tea. Even though there no. was chemistry. There mm -hmm. was chemistry. Mm -hmm. It was great. But I dodged a bullet. And I've noticed I've done that a lot with a lot of people that I've messed with in the, in the past. Um, when I decide to stop fucking with somebody, I've dodged a bullet. Some shit comes out about him and I'm like, thank God. Oh my mm -hmm. God. And he came out and he had like fucking 17 girls like Tad, tatted on his body. Oh like, my not God. Not on his body, That's but their body. He had. <laughs> How big was he? He had his name tatted on their bodies. <laughs> oh, okay. They had his 17 name. Okay. different girls. That's wild. I'm like, oh yeah. No, I definitely dodged a bullet. 17 girls. I'm yes. like, oh no. Was he an artist or something? No. <laughs> Just a regular. <laughs> Just a big OnlyFans guy. Okay. Like, All yeah. right. Lisa Ann, you've also been on a great journey talking about health and wellness, yeah. too. And I think that's important as we're having these conversations just to kind of wrap this up. But talk to us about that. I think it's really important. We, you know, we talk so much about mental health in the media. We put it out there. But what are we doing every day to make sure that we're at our best and that we're looking out for our friends and the people in our mm -hmm. lives to make sure they're okay? And whether it's establishing a good morning routine that makes you wake up happy. Like I don't touch my phone for the first three hours. I'm awake. I have another mm -hmm. phone that has my Pandora for my music mm -hmm. at the gym. You know, my little thing, I don't check email. I don't fuck with anybody. Cause when I grew up, my parents got not one phone call at home from work. They went back to work the next day and that's where it happened. Mm -hmm. So I think having that time for you can really start your day in the right way. And then being able to look out for your people. When do you see somebody maybe dipping a little bit on social? Reach out, text, don't leave a comment in the DM. Text, hey, you good? I haven't seen you in a minute. Let's catch up. Since the pandemic, I've also been so much more connected with my friends, like done more FaceTimes mm -hmm. and, and video calls than ever. And we've kept this in our lives. And I will say like, it is so good to have these friendships that you've had for years mm -hmm. that live in different places. And mm -hmm. whether it's once a month or once a week, you hop on, you just catch up what went on in your life this week. These little escapes from all the stuff that's worrying us on the internet, the constant pressure, did I post enough today? Do I look good enough today? You forget all of that when you're connecting with people 
that care about you and that right. you care about. And I just think it's so easy for us to take ourselves and, and make our lives as content because I think when you're older, content becomes valuable. Mm -hmm. When you're younger, you want everything to be amazing. No, I'm mm -hmm. going with content. Yeah. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> but yeah. take that time. Even. And I think we all need <laughs> to be aware of our own limits. If you're if you're cranky one day, it is okay to not do mm -hmm. shit if you can. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a weekend and you don't feel like putting your makeup, it's okay mm -hmm. to do that. I think it's that, is it okay? We have to let it be okay. We have to connect with our people and start our days or end our days in a routine that really makes us feel happy. I love that. Mm -hmm. That was a great way you for too. us to kind of wrap this up. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I do appreciate y'all both for coming on here. I like the synergy between the two of you because Kaya is trying to figure out her way, you know, to get to a different space pivot. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little pivot. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. to pivot. And Lisa Ann has, I think, more successfully than anybody. Thank you. You know, pivoted. <laughs> and a lot of that is due to, like I said, the intelligence that you have, the capabilities that you have, the willingness to always learn and grow. But, but I love the fact that you told us how you were able to do it, even though they were naysayers. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's always going to be naysayers. And you've had. That's inspiring as hell. Yeah. The I way mean, you acting, turned that around. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's inspiring as fuck. Thank I love you. it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I think that's amazing to see. And that's why, Kaya, I think it's great for you to have been on here with her. Because you're only 25 years old right oh, now. baby. So you have time. Baby, girl. You're baby, girl. And you're going to get it together. And I'm really hopeful that you decide to just go ahead and, like, be more open with posting your music and pursuing your goals. Because you can make it happen. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we followed each other on IG, so you're going to reach oh, out to me with questions. Oh, yeah. And I'll put you on my FaceTime rotation, and we'll sit and we'll <laughs> chat it up. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I love to see it. Kim, Osario, Jasmine. I hope, and listen, I hope this is the beginning of a friendship, like how we have our friendship, mm -hmm. you know, on here. Because yeah. I think it is so important so that we all support each other. And Lisa Ann, you cannot not come up here for that long of a time again. <laughs> I'll be back and bring shortly, some motherfucking wine. And I'm bringing the wine. <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing the wine. Mm -hmm. Welcome at any time. We love you. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. It's lip service. Yeah.